Joe, if you'll come. I want to introduce Joe Costello here. Um, he leads our front line. Um, and uh, man, just always brings the word with the uh, great preparation. And uh, tonight I would, I would ask that not only would he bring the word, your light's on. I don't know if it's still good. Okay. Um, uh, my, mine, yeah, all right. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but even just that he would speak it with authority. And I wanted to just say something to um, you young men and women over here. I think early on, you know, I, I said something like youthlings or something like that just to be goofy. Um, but the reality is um, God chose you. The reality is God chose you. He knew you before you were form, born. He knew you. He formed you. And he knew the hour that we'd be in. He knew the things that would be going on in the world. And he said, I'm going to choose this one for here. And what I found is my children need more. And now not so much children anymore, young men. They need more than just my voice. And this is something that's scriptural. And, you know, you see this in Ephesians. But there's, there's it talks about how there's many voices that, are, are, that it takes to, to equip us, right? And, um, and so I just believe that you're going to hear uh, uh, tonight uh, just something that will be life-changing. And if you'll, if you'll listen, and you'll listen sharply, um, and you'll see PowerPoint and all that kind of good stuff tonight. Um, but you'll, you, and you can watch this again, so you don't have to get everything. But, yeah. All right, man. Hit it. I am on. I am on. I'm on. No. I'm not on. I mean, I know I'm not verbally being being heard, but I think I'm on. There it's coming. Okay, it's on. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. See, Pastor Nate, of all my bacon, he saves it. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, so um, uh, we're going to get these slides put up here, and um, we're going to get underway uh, my name is Joe. If we haven't met, let's meet. And um, you'll have that goldfish experience with me because um, I'm always that guy that's like, hey, I'm Joe, and you'll introduce yourself. And I'll be like, awesome, are you new to the church? And you'll be like, I came here eight months ago, and we've met four times. And it's nice to re-meet you again. And I'm sorry for that. But let's meet, okay, again. All right, for real this time, for real this time. All right, my wife, she's like, hey, you need to meet more people. And I'm like, I meet new people all the time. She's like, you met those people two weeks ago. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to make sure these are working, okay? Awesome. It's so weird. I'm out of my element because, um, uh, sorry, that was my bad. Okay, so in Frontline, like, it's like fight night, okay? I don't know if Brad can cue up the, the music that plays that front line, but it's a whole nother thing, okay? And we have all this amazing worship time, and everybody just gets quiet, and their spirit just gets quiet and starts that conversation with God, you know what I mean? And I'm, like, I'm over there, like, putting my gloves on and taping up, and, you know, it's just a completely different thing. But um, if my energy level is a little different than what we just transitioned from, You'll warm up to me, okay? You'll warm up to me. Okay, so disclaimers are, I'm not a, uh, a pastor. I'm not on staff here. And if this is your first time ever coming to Beyond or you're watching this for the first time online tonight, um, just put it on your calendar come back on Sunday, okay? The real pastoral staff of this church are amazing. They're loving, incredible. They're spiritually, yeah, they're wonderful people. Not, they're not like me. You guys just don't take this as the normal for the church, okay? Okay. Um, Secondly, is the fact that uh, I normally talk to men, okay? So you're going to see in the slides tonight that a lot of the verbiage just talks to men, okay? But um, in general, I'm not super sensitive or compassionate or <laughs> kind. So tonight, I'm going to say things probably that are pretty abrupt, like to your face, yes. okay? Because... That's how guys have to be spoken to, okay? So you ladies just understand, all right, that I'm going to talk to you tonight like you talk to your husbands, okay? <laughs> it's going to happen, right? To your face. In your face, Mace. Okay. So 
First of all, I got to start with this. Over here in this area, okay. Raise your hands if you think that my shoes are grandpa shoes. Okay, I, just, I need a good, I need a good, okay, raise your hand if my shoes are legit. Okay, no legit, okay. That's cool. Now, here's the thing, right? You know, you, I'm not going to give you the backstory, but I needed a good, I need some feedback, okay? Okay. So, um, tonight, yeah, we're going to talk about the spoken word. And we're really going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about what you say. We're going to talk a lot about what you don't say, okay? And uh, uh, what I want you to do tonight, more than you take note of what I say or what's on the slides, the slides will always be back there for your review. We post these on um, line for you to see, okay? What I really want you to do tonight is I want you to take note of what God says to you, okay? Because what's going to happen is at some point in time as I'm talking, you're going to feel like this abrupt, sharp pain in your ribs. And it's going to be God going, hey, this is for you, okay? Now, normally, that's your uh, spouse, right? But tonight, that's not going to be what's happening, okay? Tonight, God is going to let you know this is for you. That's what I want you to take note of because that's what you need to have a further conversation about. Yeah. Just between you and him. Yeah. Okay? And um, his word is so good to talk to you about that specific area of your life. Yeah, right? True. So take note of that tonight. All right? Be ready to receive that. Right? We always say, right, your expectation is an invitation. Right? So if you weren't expecting anything tonight, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get your mitt up. It's baseball season starting up. Right? Get your mitt up. Tell my boys that, because here's the thing. The ball is going to hit you in the face, and it's going to break your nose. You're going to be bleeding everywhere, and then it's going to be bad for your shirt, okay? So don't let God's word for you tonight hit you in the face. Catch it. Make sense? So be ready to catch it. All right. So the unspoken word. Let's talk about bottom line up front, something we say in the military. Bluff, I'm in the military. Uh, bottom line up front. The word of God, when spoken from our mouths and within his will, has the force to create, direct, heal, bind, and loose, open and close, nourish, and otherwise provide anything else, anything uh, that is intended for us as his children within the realms of his glory and within the scope of his kingdom. So anything that God intends to get to you or that you need in your life as a child of God is available to you through his word. Now, I'm inevitably, okay, I'm going to touch on some things that you're not, maybe not familiar with tonight. It's maybe foreign to you, okay? And that's okay. I want you to kind of uncross the arms of your heart tonight, right? You ever seen a guy standing like this? Okay? Sometimes we can just sit there with our heart like that, right? And I want you to just kind of uncross the arms of your heart, loosen up a little bit, and be open to something that maybe you didn't grow up hearing, Okay? So the bottom line, front line, see, this is the purpose of front line. I'm going to make a lot of shameless plugs tonight for front line. Shameless, all right? Shameless. Especially to you young guys. You young guys over here, you're invited to front line. Raise your hand if you're over 16 and you're a guy. Higher. For Pete's sake. Come on, Jalen, get these guys. Jalen, get these guys under control. Hey, look, Jalen, like, oh, God. All right, I drink a lot of energy drinks for obvious reasons. So you guys are invited to Frontline. The girls are not, okay? It's like the He-Man Woman Haters Club, all right? Got a door, sign on the door. And here's the thing. It's not because we don't want you to have the information. We post all of the Frontline events online for, you to go, for the girls to go watch. But the thing is, two things. Number one, we don't share cookies. Guys don't share cookies, and we have Nutter Butters. All right, we go a long distance to get nutter butter, so the girls are not welcome. Second of all, where's Jimmy? Hey, Jimmy still got a pocket full of nutter butters right now. I watched him walk out of here Thursday night with him. Still got them. He said they're gone. <laughs> Stayed up all night, all night eating nutter butters. But here's the second reason the girls aren't invited is just simply because guys, you know, they walk around. Just a swagger, right? They can't cry in front of a bunch of girls. Guys cannot get real in front of a bunch of girls. So we create that brotherhood environment for guys to show up and get real with one another. All right? Same reason why you girls are going to go eat pasta. I guess pasta bonds women. I don't know. 
whatever, okay? But I'm just telling you, <laughs> you put some spaghetti sauce on, on relationships and it's amazing. Frontline empowers men with information, relationships. But here's what I want you to understand. This church, okay, I want you to put this up here first of all. Replace Frontline with Beyond Church, okay? Beyond Church empowers men and women with the information, relationships, and encouragement to grow in their relationship with the Lord so they can continually advance towards living the victorious life that God intended for them. Yes. Now, here's the thing. You can be saved. You can be a believer. You can come to this church for the eight months that I've met you over and over again, and you can still not be living victorious. Yeah. Guess what? You can be that way for 30 years. You can die that way. Yeah. Your salvation is not, a, is not a, um, a, a, a promise to victorious living. It's not. The accessing of that revelation and that, that word in your life, it takes time and work. And that's why I come here, okay? I went to a lot of churches that where I, I, I experienced the fact that there was no results there. And it was because of the fact that they were not operating in the word of God, okay? Now, that being said, this message, its intent is to define what the spoken word is, why we are or are not using it, and to develop a plan of action that allows you to execute on God's intended use of his word in our lives to bring about the above-mentioned victory. That's our purpose for tonight. Get a plan. All right. So, why do I care, bro? All right. Nobody cares, man. All right. You young people over there. Already sleeping. Matt. So, y'all need some. We should hand out free energy drinks. Pastor's like, that's it, that's it, shut him down, shut him down. Okay. The spoken word is 100% connected to the health and success of your life. All right, I'm getting out there on the edge now. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their word. And it turns out God actually uses his word to get things done. You see this in Isaiah 55, 11. He says, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth, it will, ret it will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So here's the deal. God sends his word with purpose to get results. Now, it's, I want you to understand from the jump start, this is not your word. This is God's word. I have a tendency sometimes in my life as an example to think that my words get more results when I say them louder. Does anybody else have that problem? Right? Say them louder. They will work better. Right? It's not working. Do it harder. Right? This is God's word. All right. Now, a lot of mentions, a lot of likes, right? The Bible, these are the amount of times that the word speak or mouth or tongue appear in the Bible. It's a lot of times. God's talking about your mouth, okay? And uh, although obviously there's going to be times where this is not in context, you get, you get the idea that um, God has a very keen interest in how you talk, okay? All right. So you're typically going to find that people fall into one of three buckets. Now, the first bucket is you grew up in a house where the spoken word's used all the time. You heard about it at church. Your parents educated you about the spoken word, uh, meaning God's spoken word, God's word spoken in your life, okay? And, and you're educated about it, and you use it, and it's just been an integral part of your life from the, the day you were born. Now, that's a very, very small bucket of people, Okay. The majority of people are going to fall into the second bucket, which is people who probably have been educated believers about the Word of God and how it's used when spoken. And, you know, you probably heard about it on Sundays and Wednesdays and, and nights like tonight, and then you go home and it's just kind of like one of those other things, Bible lessons that get shoved on the shelf, and it gets brought back out every now and then and dusted off and put back on the shelf. And it's just kind of like, you know, it just never really, never really like became something that was daily used, Right? It's like mom's fine china. It just comes out of Christmas or whatever, okay? And so that's the majority of people. That's the majority of believers, right? The other bucket of people are going to be the folks that are also uh, kind of in a small group of people, and that's just people who just never really heard about it. Believers just never really heard much about the spoken word, okay? 
And so I don't know really where you fall into that category, what category you or bucket you fall into, but whichever one you fall into tonight, everybody's moving to the first bucket. We're fixing to learn about it. You're going to understand it, and then you're going to go use it, okay? So that being said, uh, let's talk about what it is. (laughs) Now, look, Alex, I'm sorry, okay? I just picked Alex because it was Alex Trebek. I'm sorry. My son's name is Alex, okay? Alex Trebek ain't even thing anymore. He's gone, right? I got some, obviously got some Jeopardy fans in here hurting for Alex. Okay, I understand. What is the spoken word? Simply puts this. It's the spoken word is this. God's literal word from the Bible or a derivative that is based in, on his will and communicated in his word but tailored to our life. That is verbalized out of our mouths in faith with the goal of bringing about his plan and will for our life. Okay? So let's look at some examples. Okay? Here's an example. You say, God, in Jeremiah 29, 11, your word says, quotes, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And I declare right now that I have hope in spite of this circumstance. Now, you just literally quoted a scripture, okay? That's the spoken word. You declared it over your life. Took ownership of that word, said, this is mine for me. Or, this is kind of the second uh, alternative. This is kind of a derivative, okay? Derivatives, anybody know what a derivative is? Comes from, okay? So, God, your word in Jeremiah states that you have plans for me. And because I know you love me and you will never leave me, I declare that I have hope and that my family will go stronger in our love and faith through these circumstances or through this circumstance. So you didn't quote scripture, but you were speaking God's purpose and will for your life based on his word. Does that make sense? Now, it's real super important to understand this second part because I'll be honest with you. Like, I, I am not the uh, memory verse king, right? So if you don't necessarily have the word perfectly memorized, here's the thing. It's written on your heart. What God's intention for your life is written on your heart, based on his word, okay? So you're empowered. You're capable of speaking it. All right. What is it not? What's the spoken word not? The spoken word is not supposed to be used as an attempt to manipulate God into getting what you would will for your life. It's not God's intended use of this weapon in your life, okay? You used to hear this, like, name it and claim it, right? What does this mean, guys? It means this. Oh, hey. Those new cleats or that new computer or those new AirPods or those new Beats. You know what? In Jesus' name, those are mine. Right? That's kind of like you're trying to use God's word to get what you want, right? Not that he doesn't want you to be blessed, because he does. Right? But the question is, is if something comes into your life and it's valued by the world but it's corruptive to your life, is that, is that really what God's will is for you. So just getting what you want isn't always good. Okay, let's look at this. James 4.23, this is an example. It says, you are jealous and covet what others have, and your lust goes unfulfilled. So you murder, you're envious, and you cannot obtain the objective of your envy, so you fight and battle. You do not have because you do not ask it of God. You ask God for something, and you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives, out of selfishness, selfishness or with an unrighteous agenda, so that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your own hedonistic desires. Turns out, this is not a new thing. <laughs> Humans have been dirtbags from the beginning. I mean, thank God for Jesus, right? Don't be a dirtbag. All right. Sorry. Okay. So if we know what the scripture says, we know that God's word is good. We know his will for us is good. We know that we can speak God's word over our life. And we can bring about his will for our life. All those good things, all his promises. It turns out there's a lot of those. Why don't we do that? Well, this is complicated. It's a little different for everybody. Okay, I'm going to throw a couple reasons out there. First of all is this. The fact that your spiritual life in general is something that is typically private, right? What you believe, your spiritual life, what you pray about, what you talk to God about, what you really think, what your faith um, 
what your faith beliefs are, what, what is your spiritual life, whatever it's made of is typically private. You come to church, and you'll bear your soul here, right? Most of us, like, at most bear our armpits. We raise our hands occasionally, right? That's it. And you can go home, and you can be doubting. You can be in fear. You can be suffering from anxiety. You can have all kinds of issues. Nobody knows that. But here's what's unique. The spoken word is the intersection of your spiritual life to the physical realm. Because when I speak, you're going to know what I think. And you know what? If I don't speak, you're going to know what I think. Now, what's interesting about this is that for most people, speaking is not, is not something they're comfortable with typically anyway. I think uh, public speaking is one of the number one fears of most people, right? So the fact is, is that... Um, your comfort level with opening your mouth and sharing with the world around you what you really believe, that's a leap for a lot of people. So that's one reason, okay? Now, you also have to understand that this is directly connected with the fact that you can get voted off the island. You start saying what you think, you start... I mean, what are your friends going to think about at school if you're just standing in the locker room be like... Man, thank you, Lord, for healing my foot. That sucker is aching. Thank you, Lord, that you're my master physician. You just, you're going to heal it from the inside out. What are your friends going to think? They walk up on you, right? And you're just kind of like having a conversation with God, saying what you need, what you're thankful for, asking. What are your coworkers going to think? What's some of your family members going to think? I mean, I got family members that... If I'm talking to God out loud, thanking him for some of his promises, be like, no, that ain't allowed. I'm just saying, like, I get it. And here's the deal. Nobody wants to get excluded. Nobody wants to get voted off the island. And especially, uh, there's seasons of your life where this is super important to people, okay? You get as old and you've been like, I got this mustache, I'm just doing everything I can to cover my face. And you've been in my position as long as I have. You just don't care what people think anymore, right? Yeah. But when you're young and handsome or beautiful, you know what I mean? You don't want anything to be used as judgment against you. And this is a long tribal thing. This has been the case because for as long as time has gone by, you've needed people to survive. And guess what? You still do whether or not that's physically or emotionally and spiritually. You weren't made to be an island. So anything that can disconnect us from other people is labeled as dangerous. So speaking God's word with boldness is not necessarily on the top of everybody's list when it comes to uh, how it might affect your relationships. All right? That might be a reason. All right, but how about this? Time. Now, this is just a breakdown of the average person's life. It might be 25 to 34 with children. I have a couple, and I can tell you that this is um, relatively perkable, okay? So look at this, this breakout. You got work, 38% of your day. Sleep, 33% of your day. That's very out of balance for some people, okay? Or would be if I let it happen. Who would sleep more than 33% of their day? Be honest. All right. All right. Some of you ladies, <laughs> my wife's like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Anybody got that, like, uh, deal where you, if you sleep more than about six hours, you're just bothered? Like, you got to get up? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking against that right now in the name of Jesus. Right? Okay, but here's the deal, right? What I'm going to do in this next slide is this. I have taken all of those activities, and this is what's represented here in the blue. 76% of your day is time that's sleeping, working, eating, drinking, or in otherwise involved in public stuff. And here's the thing. That leaves you about 23 to 24% of your day to be in a position to possibly just out loud, not around other people, be speaking God's word over your life. How hard is it to develop a habit that you're going to stick with in 23% of your day? It's hard, right? 
So I get it. There's definitely roadblocks to just walking around and saying, thank you, Lord, for and sowing God's word in your life. All right? So here's, here's, here's one. I don't know what to say. I don't know if the people that I'm around believe like I believe. I don't even know if I um, know what I believe. Maybe I need to take some time and get in the Word and figure out what I believe. And guess what? That takes time. And right now, I'm in the middle of sleeping or eating or drinking or whatever you're doing. But you're not in the middle of Bible time. So you don't know what you believe or you don't know what to say or you don't know what God says about it, so you don't say anything. Right? Okay. There's a lot of reasons that basically what I'm getting at, and you could pick the other ones, you know, whatever applies to your life, that we don't do what we need to do as it pertains to the spoken word. Okay, so we got to start somewhere. Here we go. This is your life on a timeline. It's super short. This, time, this line is super short, right? But here's what I want to convey to you about God's word in your life. It's time sensitive. God's word's time sensitive. Okay? Unlike homework. Hey, when I was a kid, homework was due. Today, right now. And if it wasn't turned in, Stinks to be you. Is that how it is now? Uh, my kids are like, oh, she said, if I turn that in, if I get 50% of that done by next week, I get like 90% of credit. <laughs> That's what happens at my house, y'all. I'm like, you got to get 50% done to get 90% credit. Okay. All right, cool. So this is why kids live with their parents till they die. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. There is a word for every season of your life, okay? I want you to think about the word of God like a steering wheel in your car, okay? A steering wheel in a vehicle, uh, as long as it's gripped at 10 and 2, all right, and the accelerator is applied correctly, the steering wheel is supposed to take you to a final destination. It has the purpose of taking you to where it is you're trying to go. All right, so it also has the purpose of helping you make the turns that you have to make right now to get to that destination. Okay? So I want you to think of the word over your life in that context. The word of God has a long-term destination for me, and it has a right-now application. Okay? All right. So, right now, we're going to talk about now, which is you as a horse, okay? Now, <laughs> that is me, not literally, but kind of. My kids have a lot of stories about this one particular horse that drug me for a long way, and I love to tell that story, okay? Particularly any time they see a horse, even if it's on the same road trip or simultaneously over and over again. Oh, there's another horse. Dad, you remember that time? It's like, yeah, there was a horse back there about three miles ago, and you told this story. And they laugh all the same. So here's the deal. In the Word, this is what it says, James 3, 3, okay? Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So takeaway here, first of all, is this. Your life, like a horse, needs constant direction. Small corrections all the time to ensure it's going the right direction. You ever just let a horse wander around? with you on it, and I promise you, you will not get where you want to go. You will get where he wants to go. Now, that means that you need to be speaking God's word over your life all the time. Without firm oversight, your mouth will buck and run amok. That just rhymed, I don't know. Dragging you into the thickets and beating you to death. That's what happened to me. That's a little personal testimony right there. Your mouth will do that, just like a horse. If you don't control that thing, it is going to drag your face on the ground, your life through the dirt, until it's over. Your mouth cannot be left unattended. Lastly is this. There's words that are meant to be spoken over your life right now, words that are for this moment. Now, I want you to think about the fact that um, horses are... uh, I, I'm sure that there's like um, 
in your mind, you can think back to a time where you saw in a movie or a video or something where these horses are like herding cattle or they're herding sheep or something. And they move very quickly. These horses, they move back and forth very quickly to get where they need to go to make sure that they're doing their job, right? And those riders are adjusting those horses with just the slightest of touch to get that effect. And those, those animals are very agile, okay? So my point is, is this. There is a word for your life for right now to adjust to a fast circumstance for right now, right? So there's a great word. Thank you, Lord, that you're providing all of our needs. And right. That's wonderful. That, there's a space and time for that. But there's a time for, thank you, Lord, that you're helping him see right now what's deceiving him. Thank you, Lord, that right now you're conveying to, to this person's heart that they're loved and worthy. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord, that you're protecting them. Right? Because there's something happening right now that needs that word right now. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing is you're a ship. You're a boat. The word of God is awesome at all kinds of making you into things, okay? Your life is like an aircraft carrier. James 3, 4. Behold, as the ships, which they, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. Or some, uh, some versions say rudder. <laughs> and I can't even read this last sentence. That's why I put it in here. Whithersoever the governor listeth. <laughs> Wherever he wants to go. All right? So, the takeaways here, your life, like a ship, is full of complexities, other people's lives, resources that are guided by your mouth. So here's the deal. How many people do you think is on that aircraft carrier? Five? Six. Tops. 6,000. Thousands of people. That little rudder on the back of that ship is guiding all of those people's lives. Your mouth doesn't just affect you. Your mouth is driving the lives of a lot of people, affecting them. Your words are meant to be turned in a direction required like a rudder. So here's the deal. A ship doesn't turn on a dime like a horse. It takes time to turn. So the rudder of a ship has to be turned well in advance of getting that ship where it needs to go. So this, on a timeline, is now we're talking about things that we need happening in our lives, that we want happening in our family's lives, that we understand are not going to happen right now. But we're, we're pointing that word in a direction so that we can arrive at that destination in the near future. The other thing is that Ships on oceans are subject to a lot of things like big waves. This is why I don't go on cruises, okay? This is why I don't do it. Don't do it. Don't go on a cruise. Don't test God. That's what he said. Don't test God. <laughs> don't go on a cruise. Don't do it. Right? I'm a land lover. <laughs> Ski boat? Check. I can swim back to the, you know what I mean? You get hundreds of miles out there in the ocean, and the big old waves, man, the wind's blowing. Why? Why? There's better ways to get to Mexico. I'm going to Cozumel, right? Fly down there. Here's the point. The word of God will sustain a storm. But you got to be speaking it in spite of the waves and in spite of the wind. And you have to understand that just like um, a boat can be pushed by all these things, you got to push back with that word. You're speaking God's word in spite of the waves. The waves don't come and the guy says, oh, well, you know, it's pushing pretty hard this way. I guess we'll turn the rudder this way. We'll just go on over here now. You had a destination. Okay. Nice rowboat. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, okay. Here we go. This is where it's going to get, this is where it's going to get thick, okay? Okay, well, let's go back. 
This is now we're in a time that seems like forever from now, okay? So this is like for you guys, like two months, all right? <laughs> two months from now, just imagine, two months from now, all right? If I say, this is a time, a long time from now, it's like, you mean after I graduate? Yeah, <laughs> long, long time from now. That's a horrible picture, but it's, it's graphic for a reason. Your mouth feeds your life and all those in it. Let's go back to eight, Proverbs 18. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequences of his words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of it. I want you to, I want you to embrace this analogy that God's using to fruit and, the, and his word. You see, a lot of famine that you're experiencing in life sometimes comes from the fact that you've got perfectly good soil that you're not planting. The word is meant to be sown. It's a seed. <clears throat> Secondly, there's areas of your life that lack health and need better nutrients, which is really just you need to be speaking something of quality. You need to be planting a seed that has the capability to do what you need in your life. Again, I'm going to go back to this. I like, I'm a logophile. That means I'm a lover of words. Words are very important because they frame up how we think. Okay? I loved sitting under that message the other night from Mr. Ritter. He goes back to the Greek all the time. And, he, and it, what's insane is this message that you think you understood when you apply a word to it that's more definitive from the root language, it changes everything. Words are very important. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. This is an aside. Society is changing the words we use for a reason. Society is using words that don't apply in our lives so that what we define as something is different. And I want you to take note of what words are used because they're seeds. So this is my point. Reading the word, listening to someone explain it, owning seven copies of it, which I do, posting it on Facebook, talking about it at small group, coming to Bible study, it's all great. It doesn't matter if you don't sow it. If you don't speak it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you know if you don't say it. I'm sorry. I didn't write this stuff. And I have to apply this to my own life. Meaning, I don't do this sometimes when I'm supposed to, obviously. But don't go home and be like, whoa, that was a great word. Well, it was a great word. What are you going to do with it? I want you to understand that the word is, comes from, this word comes from a generational God. It sees well beyond today, even past when you graduate. It's crazy far, way out there. And I want you to think about this. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the hands of the righteous. I want you to read this verse, Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit, which is upon you, and my words, which I have put in your mouth, shall not depart from your mouth. Wow, pretty good deal. But nor from the mouth of your offspring, and nor from the mouth of your offspring's offspring. From now until actually forever. That's when your word is supposed to stay on my mouth, God, forever? So here's my question. What inheritance have you left so far to your offspring? I was raised in church. I was raised in a home that where God was, you know, I was taught. Did my dad do this? When I was a young man, 
Did my dad walk around the house? Thank you, Lord, for in the name of Jesus. Speaking God's word, God's promises. Addressing issues in our lives right then, addressing the future of our lives, addressing the future generations of our lives. Did my dad model that at the time? No, he didn't. And you know what that meant? As a young adult, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't even know I was supposed to do that. Sometimes we think that learning to be a good Christian means that when we get saved, whatever the people do in our church, if that's what they do, that's what I do. That means I'm good at this. No, actually, when we do this, that's when we're good at this. So if, peop- if your offspring are doing what you're modeling, is that good or bad? You get to answer that. Now, to you people, you people. Why are you going to be coming at me, bro? <laughs> Grandpa shoes are fast. <laughs> Question is, are you going to do what you've been taught by example, or are you going to do the right thing? Because here's the deal. If you're looking at people in your life that are full of famine, you might want to take a look at other options. Just because that's what your grandma's church always did, that don't make it right. Because that church is full of human beings, and they they ain't always right. This is what's always right. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, okay, okay. Lay off. I get it. All right. Fine. What am I supposed to do about it? Well, okay. How about this? Just... Just do this, okay? I want you to take a look at what God has said about his plan for your life. I want you to look in the word about what God has said about his purpose for you, his willingness to redeem you, his love for you, what he's given for you, what he's providing for you, and I just want you to say what he said. That's all. Just say what he said. It's actually that simple. Like, you spoke to me for 45 minutes to say that. Yeah. Just say what God said. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's not as easy as it sounds. I want you to understand that you have a creative capability. This is a revelation in and of itself. We just spent all night on this slide, to be honest with you. Because here's the deal. You're created in God's image. How did God create things? Hands, anybody? With his word. So if he created you in his image and he was creatively capable with his mouth, what does that make you? Creatively capable with your mouth. So is it your responsibility to use this creative capability? I don't know. Do you have the ability to respond? You do. Therefore, it's your responsibility. I didn't leave the milk out. I know. Do you have the ability to put it away? You do. It's your responsibility. This is my life. I'm sorry. You're dragging your life in here, Joe. I know. So here's the deal. The enemy comes, John 10, 10, summarized, to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life life more abundantly. So if you're the hands and feet of Jesus, what are you supposed to be doing with this creative capability? Mm, bring in life. That's our responsibility. So what is your area of responsibility? You, your wife, your family, your children, your church. Does your responsibility to speak God's word, to plan it in partnership with him, does your responsibility end where your comfort level begins? I don't know. It's not really like it's not my thing. It's not my jam, man. I don't really talk out loud, especially in front of people. Yeah, God doesn't care what your jam is. And oh, by the way, whenever you're um, busy being uncomfortable, I bet in in your life you'd wish somebody would get uncomfortable to speak on your behalf. So be that guy. Does his expectations go beyond what your flesh's comfort level is confined to? Does God's expectation of you go beyond what your flesh is comfortable with? 
Absolutely. 100%. So it's not about your comfort anymore. This is about the health and welfare of your life and those people who you have a responsibility for. Who do I have a responsibility for? I don't even know that cat. Oh, really? Okay, we'll talk about that. Who didn't start the fire? We didn't start the fire. Think Billy Joe. Y'all didn't sing that song? Anybody want to give me a little bit of it? I was counting Kyle. The first thing I want you to understand is this. Sometimes the first thing you got to do is shut your mouth. Stop talking. I get, I get, I get, uh, I, I, I catch a lot of flack for this, okay? Like, I don't, I'll be honest with you, right? If you can't use your tongue constructively, don't use it. Just don't. Some of y'all, <laughs> some of y'all standing over like a tinderbox with a match with your mouth. And you know exactly what to say to light that thing off. In your marriage, in your, in your, uh, with your uh, coworkers, you know exactly what to say. And you know what you're doing. So the first thing some of us need to do is just stop talking in general. Because here's the thing. This is what I want you to take away from this slide. First of all, I'm not advocating Billy Joel's, uh, Billy Joel's music, okay? <laughs> but what I will tell you is this. When you light a forest fire, do you know how big it's going to get? You don't. And some of the things that we say, you know what the enemy does? He stands back with a big old lung full of oxygen, and he just lights that sucker up. I've said some things in my marriage that I come back to 24 hours later, and I'm like, we're going to need back up. <laughs> Y'all ever done that? Like, oh, boy. I just left this burning overnight, and now it's something different. <laughs> All together. Right? I thought I was just going to heat it up a little bit, come back to it tomorrow. No. Mm-mm. Four counties are gone. <laughs> here's, here's the problem. Hey, some of y'all don't ever, hey, some of y'all, some of y'all, like me, guess what? I never got that sucker put out. Some of those relationships just burned because you wouldn't control your tongue. I mean, there's some laughing in it, but hey, right? So, and here's the thing, right? Y'all can't get on one of them backpack fire suppressor things, be like, hey, I'm ready. I'll just say what I want. I'm ready to put it out. No, it ain't that good. So, next thing is you need to stockpile some ammo, right? Anybody like shoot guns? One guy. Come on. We're in Arkansas. Yeah. If you, hey, if you never shot a gun, go shoot a gun. Okay, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> God, church told me to start shooting guns. <laughs> I love my church. <laughs> he said, God loves guns. <laughs> All the uh, applicable safety uh, regulations apply and laws. And at this point, I'm basically, uh, you know, I'm no longer responsible. <laughs> I am responsible. Okay. As men of God, spiritual leaders, protectors, and providers, you as women of God. See, there's that men of God thing. As women of God. You're responsible. You need to have God's word written on your heart to use when, it times, when it's time uh, to address the thief and the killer and destroyer. Here's the question. If life and death are in your tongue, what do you intend to say to give life? What are you prepared to say that will give life where death, theft, and destruction are underway? Now, I want you to imagine, are you an accomplice if you watch somebody steal something and you don't do anything about it? You don't call 911, right? You just sitting over there in your house, front porch, drinking some tea, sweet tea. These guys show up in a moving truck with masks on at your neighbor's house. Mm. 
man, they got the TV. <laughs> you don't call anybody? You don't say anything? You don't do anything? What does that make you? So here's my question. <laughs> In front line, that's what I was talking about. Guys, guys got these uh, concealed carry licenses. You ever, you ever seen that? Guys carrying around pistols. Serious? Serious business? Pistols? I'm doing that like Barney Fife because that's how I feel, you know. I ain't got no, let's imagine this guy, right? He's got a gun. He's got no bullets. He goes, what, what? What? Good, good question. It's a rock. Hey, just out of curiosity, what's the point of a word of God if you ain't got any of it in your pocket? I mean, what are you going to say, bro? This guy is hurting. He's struggling with depression. He's afraid. And you got nothing? You got nothing to say? You just have the life of God supposedly in your life, but you don't got none of it to say? You're just going to watch him bleed out. Because you didn't what? Take the time to write it on your heart? Come on. So, I want you to understand one thing. If you leave here tonight and you don't take this to heart, I ain't making excuses for you. You're leaving that accountable tonight. You're accountable from now on. And you can't just sit it out. Silence is a partnership with the enemy. Because what you're saying is, oh, I know, I know I should say something, but I'm just choosing not to. And in that choice, you're letting the enemy still kill and destroy where you have the power to give life. So if that's the handshake you want to make, just understand it's not going to be anybody beyond church you answer to over that. It's not going to be anybody here. It's going to be your creator. It's going to be the one that empowered you. Just like the parable of the talents, the master comes back. What did you do with what I gave you? Teamwork makes a dream work. So what I want you to do, I want you to partner with the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is so good, he's going to prompt you. Okay? He's going he's to explain to you in a moment you need to say something. Right? Guys, you ever get that nudge? Like, you gonna say something from your wife? Are you gonna say something? Kid comes in, got mud all over the floor, and she's just looking at me like, "You gonna say something?" <laughs> now, Holy Spirit's gonna look at you and go, "You gonna say something?" Because here's the deal. It says right here in John 16, 13, when the spirit truth of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit is going to declare to you. Now, we could just go through the whole Bible and listen to all of these different stories where Jesus heard what they were thinking. And you know what Jesus didn't do? He didn't be like, whatever. He turned around and he said something. He opened his mouth and he confronted those people or those issues. So, no more holding your tongue. There's no productivity in that. That's just a partnership with the enemy. That's all that is. That's just you coming into agreement with the thief. Like, yeah. Man, got the TV. I don't know, maybe I should offer like some like moving blankets or something. Whose side are you on? Next thing I want you to do, I want you to examine for famine. Kind of rhymed again. Examine your life for famine. Where is there famine in your life? Where is your marriage barren of the fruit of passion? Are you in a relationship and life of suffering that's stunted in growth somehow? Are your finances where they need to be? 
Because here's the thing, guys. If you eat the fruit of your mouth and there's no fruit, what have you been saying? What have you been declaring? And oh, by the way, it's my fault. God's word didn't become fruitless all of a sudden. But we can track it back. I can go back here and I can figure out why I got a problem in my marriage. Because of my stinking mouth. And I can't be like, oh, well, you know what? I, I mean, I don't, I don't say anything bad. I don't say, I don't say, I don't say a cross word to my wife. I told her I love her when we married her. Nothing's changed. <laughs> Guess what? When you say nothing, you know what you get? No thing. Nothing. No thing. That's what you got because you said no thing. So what are we going to leave unsaid? Rodney, would you, Rodney, would you mind coming up? Please, sir. Thank you. I know we didn't plan that. I apologize. What are you going to say? What, what, what needs to be left unsaid in your life at this point? I mean, where is it that God's goodness is not made available to you? It's not been revealed to you? Where there's not a word for this moment, for this situation, right? You're getting drug on your face by the horse. You can fix that, Right? If we go back to where we started, the objective of tonight was for you to understand what the spoken word is, for you to get a a plan for what you're going to say, and for you to start putting in place those words that are for now, for the short term from now, and for even after you graduate, forever from now. That you would start planning those words. Now, here's the thing. You can't plant what you don't have. I don't know if you've ever gone to Walmart to buy seeds in the middle of like, I don't know, what is it, March, April? There's nothing there. There's nothing there. It's all been taken. Because those like super green thumbs, they knew when they were supposed to get it in the ground. And I'm late. So right now, you're in a season, but there's a season that's it's progressive. Your life is progressive. The car is moving. You've got to use the steering wheel. There's things that you need right now that you need to start planting that. But this next season is coming for your children. It's coming. They don't have that issue with boys right now or girls right now, but that season is coming. They're not getting married right now, but that season is coming. Your house is an empty nest yet. It's not an empty, but that season is coming. Do you want to be in famine 20 years from now? So when you plan these words, I want you to, I want you to put a few things down on a piece of paper. Man, can I have those, uh, those those flyers? Just one. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. We're gonna set these on the stage. You guys can come take them. But this is something that just uh, the pastoral staff here put together, and it's it's based on um, category. What can I do in Christ? What am I in Christ? Where am I in Christ? It's an example. Okay. There's seeds in here for right now, and there's seeds in here for six months from now, and there's seeds in here for 60 years from now. But you're responsible to be planning for all of them, just like your retirement, just like any other thing that you've taken responsibility for in your life. It's not God's responsibility. He did it. He already gave it to us to plan. So what are you afraid Are you afraid of what people are going to hear? 
do you not have this habit? Because it's a habit that I didn't have. When God punched me in the face with this, I just sat there and bled for a while because he was right. I wasn't declaring what he said over my life. I was either justifying, I was explaining away. Now, some of you in our, some of you are in a place in your life right now where it's peaceful. You're out there in your aircraft carrier, sunshine, and you get out there and you tan all half the day as the boat just rides down the beautiful sea. It's just terrifying. It's like a cruise ship. But some of you, some of you are in a, right in the middle of a hurricane right now, okay? And for those of you that are like that, they're in that moment, I want you to understand that the authority that you have is so powerful and it's in Jesus' name. The ability that you have to declare God's word over your life just like Jesus did it will calm those seas and it will still that wind. But it's not going to necessarily be said with that mm, church voice. It's going to be said with your passion and your vigor and your energy and your authority. And you're going to mean it like somebody who's in the middle of a hurricane. So, that's your action plan for tonight. Go home, work with your spouse. Work with God if you're without a spouse. If you're with a spouse, work with God. I go home, I listen to my spouse, work with God. The Holy Spirit will prompt you. Maybe you have some questions. Maybe you're like, hey, I've never applied this in my life. I haven't even heard what you're talking about tonight, Joe. This is crazy talk. Let's talk about it. All the Pastor Earl staff here, they're happy to entertain anything you might have questions about, right? We'll go to the Word. I'm happy to, happy to go over any of this with you in, in further detail. You can go back to these slides. But I want you to say what God said about you. Say what He said about you your future so right now we're going to pray <clears throat> because I know how this goes you're going to leave here you ain't going to do this and I'm going to pray over that right now because this is March 1st and I'm telling you that in nine months from now at the end of this year, this will change your life. It'll change your life. It'll push back the enemy in your life. It'll bring about God's blessing in your life. It'll bring about a vision and a hope for your life that if you've struggled with any of that, it'll be gone. He's, he, his promise is that good. So right now, in Jesus' name, I bind up any spirit in this place that won't bow its knee to the name of Jesus. The spirit of fear, anxiety, depression, confusion, judgment, unforgiveness. Any spirit that won't bow its knee to the name of Jesus right now, I bind you up out of the hearts and the minds and the homes in this building. You have no authority and we cast you out of here. And with that clear heart and that clear mind right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I just ask that you would whisper a sweet word in the heart of these people tonight. Bring to recollection the fruit that you're trying to bring into their life, the relationships that need planting and tended to, where your word will come and heal and restore. 
bring to recollection the word that you have about their worthiness and your love for them. Bring to recollection the word that you've planted in their heart about your ability to restore their bodies and their minds and what the enemy has taken. And Father, we just ask that you would invigorate them right now to take no more of it. To declare for their own life that the stealing and the killing and the destruction is over. From now on, there's a word for that. There's a word for that. And we're going to bind up that enemy with this word. And we're going to cast that that enemy out. And we're going to declare over our life what God said it's going to be. And that's what we're going to have. That's the fruit that's going to be. There's no more famine in this place. There's no more hunger in this place. And I want that word planted in your heart that he brought to you tonight that it would grow. And we speak life and abundance over it. The life more abundantly that Jesus came to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I'm glad you're here tonight. You people, one thing. I just want you to pick one thing that you're going to say about your life one thing. Let's not make it complicated. One thing out of God's word that you believe is for you that you're missing right now. One thing. Maybe it's joy because you're dealing with situations in your life that's just crushing to your spirit. God, God's got joy for me. The fruit of his spirit's joy, and he's in me, and I'm going to be joyful. You don't get to control everything. That's that's, that's hard. Maybe you need to be courageous. Maybe you need to be brave. Maybe you need to stop letting yourself off the hook. And you go home, and you get a dry erase marker. Your parents might like it if you find a permanent marker, but pick a dry erase marker. And I want you to write that word or just something that reminds you of it on your mirror so you see it every morning. And when you see it, you say it. That's the rule. That's the rule. When you see joy on your mirror, when you see hope on your mirror, when you see courage on your mirror, you say it. I'm courageous in Jesus' name. I'm whole in Jesus' name. I'm healed in Jesus' name. When you see it, you say it. It's simple, but it works. And you know what it does? It builds a habit. Your destiny is just one small choice at a time. That's all your destiny is. It's just a series of small choices compiled. Okay? So put it on your mirror. I don't care what it is. You pick it because you know what you need. Right? All right. You people, I want you to leave dedicated tonight to be in the example you're supposed to be. I want you to leave here tonight dedicated to speaking the word out of your mouth in the company of the people that you're supposed to be leaving an inheritance to. I want you to leave an inheritance of an example because you're that powerful. You're leaving it to your children's children. You want to see a change in your uh, family tree? This is it. This is it. It's not the lottery. It's not... That daughter of yours getting married into a great family. That might happen. But that's not the change you need. Pastor Nate, I'm going to turn it over to you. Just remind you of oh, these yeah, at the end. Um, you know, all those things, joy, all that kind of stuff, whatever it might be helpful when you don't know. Uh, super, super helpful. Just a reminder, I think life and death, the power of the tongue. Um, just want to hit on that one more time. Yes, sir. I mean, it really is life and death. Some people are getting, I mean, people are getting the crud beat out of them and you see it 
but we, we don't say anything. It's just like you said, standing by, watch somebody get murdered, and you had the gun the whole time right. where you could have stopped it. Yes, sir. And um, there was something that was said years ago uh, by Pastor Willie George. If you deal with the smoke, right, if he's, you won't have the fire. And so many times we're in situations where we see somebody, uh, a little kid on the bus that is crying. Hey, what's up, buddy? And you can now say something to him. There's something you can say what God says about him. I mean, I just had that story just come back to me the, just the other day about a little kid that was called fat. And, and he, was, he was crying. And he had glasses, but he doesn't wear them because he's four eyes. And it ended up being his brother that was telling him that. And came to me that one of my boys actually said, 